Have you ever been in the sales process and you think things are going well, and at the very end you get that ding letter or that call that says you're out? Kind of sucks the life out of you, doesn't it? Well, today I want to share with you some ideas on what might be happening and how you can fix it. Hi, I'm Bill Kasky. Welcome to today's content. If you would like to subscribe to this on YouTube, you know the drill. Make sure you click the bell, hit subscribe. And if you'd like to subscribe on iTunes to the Bill Kasky podcast, same content, do so. The lower third should give you the instructions. I hear this a lot from my prospects and my clients where we're just not calling on the right people or, or we're just not getting the deal at the end. And I want to give you three things today with one thing kind of wrapped around all of it. The first area that I think we have to pay attention to is the people. Who are the people who have the influence inside your potential client company? Doesn't necessarily mean the CFO or the CEO. You're not going to get to the CEO of Oracle. I think it's Ellison still. Anyway, you're not going to get to him. But what we do want to know is who are the people who are influential in this process throughout the company? And I find a lot of times we get single focused on one person, like the purchasing agent or a telecom manager. And really the fact is there are other people around them who actually care about the solution. So there's a couple of things I want you to ask yourself. Who suffers the pain when they don't get this problem solved that you're, apparently you're in there to solve? And two, who reaps the rewards if this problem does get solved? Those two questions will help you understand what people you need to be calling on. The second step is the process. I want you to have a map that you're going to take your potential client down from the time you first start talking with them until the end. There's got to be a map. If you're going to be the guide along their journey to getting their problem solved, you've got to have a map. In selling, it's called the process, your sales process. Your sales process has to be good for them as well as you. When you control the process, you control the terms of engagement. When they control the process, they control the terms. So I want you to elegantly and craftily and cleverly and, and succinctly lay out the process that you're going to take them through to help them get their problem solved. So number two is process. You've got to be a process master so that you don't let this stuff happen to you in the 11th hour. Step three is what we'll call pain. Now, I know a lot of people talk about pain and, and pleasure and problems and need generation and all that stuff, but the fact is that you need to understand what the severity of the problem is they're trying to solve. If you can't help them understand that, and they thus don't know what the severity of the problem is, if they think it's a $50,000 problem and the fact is it's a $5 million problem, you can't help them. So you've got to be really clear. You as a sales professional, you as a VP of sales, train your people in how to do this, how to understand the true nature of the problem the prospect has. Not just what they say, but the true nature. And sometimes you have to go deeper. You have to ask questions like, you know, how long has this been going on? What happens if you decide not to fix this? What happens if it does get fixed? Tell me about the benefits that could await you if you get this problem solved and get it solved well. What are the economics of this problem? Does it cost you any money to have? Or is it just, ah, we'd kind of like to fix it. So if you get really clear on the pain or the problem, whatever word you want to put to that, of what they're trying to solve, things will move quicker. If you want to speed up your sales process and not get to the 11th hour, then pay attention to these three things, people, process, and pain. Now, I also told you I was going to give you one thing that wraps it all up into a nice bow, and that is your mindset. In a way, mindset governs all of this. If your mindset is off or wrong, or you haven't embraced resourceful thinking, then you're going to be off all the way through this. Let me tell you what I mean. If you are in need of the sale really bad, and you are attached to the outcome, and you want this sale more than anything else, you're out of control. You're out of control. Especially if you want the sale, more than the prospect once their problem solved. So that's why we want to be clear and careful about how are we thinking about our role as a sales professional as we go through this process. Number one, I want you to think of yourself as the guide. 
You're the guide that helps the prospect understand, learn, come to grips with what their problems are and what the opportunities are if they get it fixed. Number two, you've got to enter this from a totally detached position, unbiased, no expectation. And number three, you have to keep the prospect psychologically okay through the entire process. In other words, don't interrupt them, don't try to uh, enforce your will on them. If you're good at managing the process, that will come organically. So make sure you keep the prospect psychologically safe through the environment you create through the whole thing. If you'd like to subscribe to this channel, make sure you do so on YouTube. Once again, as I said earlier, you can subscribe on iTunes as well, the Bill Caskey Podcast. I hope this has helped. Leave your comments below. I sneak into the comment section occasionally and be happy to respond or answer anything that you have that you want to know about. See you next time. Bye.